Hi everyone. On March 15th, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of a truly astonishing man, someone who we really don't know a lot about, but he was certainly known during the time that he lived and by church writers that came after him. I'm referring to the Holy Apostle Aristobulus. Now Aristobulus was a Jewish man who hailed from Cyprus. And as he would have been of a darker colored skin, he would have been found right at home in the Middle East at the time of Jesus and the apostles. But yet, later on, as we shall see, he would have been someone who was immediately recognized as an outsider. Now, Aristobulus was the brother of St. Barnabas the Apostle. He was a member of the Apostles of the Seventy. He also happened to be the father-in-law of the Holy Apostle Peter. He assisted along with some of the other Apostles of the Seventy that are mentioned in the Scriptures, St. Andrew. And yet he is probably best known today, and even being mentioned by name in the epistle of St. Paul to the Romans, as someone who traveled with and assisted St. Paul as well. Probably he got his connection to St. Paul through his brother Barnabas, of course, who is mentioned many, many times uh, in the Holy Scriptures. Now Aristobulus, after his travels, decided to obey the dictates of the Holy Apostle Paul himself and accept consecration as a bishop of the church. After this, he was sent to a place that was far, far away, much further than St. Paul ever traveled himself, all the way to the western shores of the land of Britain. Now, Britain at that time was an extremely and thoroughly pagan place, very warlike, very uncultured. And in fact, even Constantine the Great would find it that way himself several hundred years later. But Aristobulus, as someone who obviously hailed from a far different region, would have stuck out like a sore thumb. Yet he made that arduous 2,000 mile trip to that land in order to bring the gospel of Christ. And one might wonder, well, why would he go so far? But of course, the apostles were those who were sent. And in obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ and full of faith in him, he went on his way. In fact, he is generally known as the founder of the church in Britain. He established many, many churches there consecrated bishops when he was there, ordained many priests and deacons, and did everything he could in the midst of a very, very hostile environment where no doubt his life was under threat constantly, yet he continued on to do these things. Now, we don't know for sure how he ended. We do know that around 42, 43 AD was the time that it has been deduced that he was sent by Paul to Britain. And we also don't know how old he was when he reposed, although the year 99 AD has been suggested uh, by some scholars. And we also don't know exactly how he met his end. In most of the hagiographic stories that we find, Aristobulus, it says, reposed in peace. And some even say that he reposed in Glastonbury Abbey, but we don't know that for sure. There are, other a, uh, there are a few other sources that also uh, seem to indicate that he was martyred, but we don't know that either. One thing we can be sure of is that whether he was actually martyred or not, his life was indeed a martyria for our Lord Jesus Christ, who, after sending him through the Holy Apostles, asked many, many things of Aristobulus to completely give his life to Christ, to endure hardships that, you know, we can't even imagine today. 2,000 miles 
back in that day and age was indeed an eternity, something very, very difficult. And even Constantine, as he went with his armies to Britain, uh, went in what we would probably consider at least a little bit of comfort and with a little bit of support, Aristobulus was there on his own preaching the gospel of Christ. Yet it cannot be denied that today, especially when we think about the English church and how it blossomed and how for, you know, at least 1100, 1200 years it was fully orthodox and uh, fully Christian in its teaching before it began to be influenced by certain uh, Western innovations. We think about its example to us today and its influence on the rest of the world. English, of course, is the most spoken language in the entire world. Uh, it has done so many things for so many people, and it is by far the most expansive language. But yet we think back on it now, and what this Greek-speaking Cypriot Jew did when he went there and had to learn many of the various Celtic dialects and everything else uh, that was happening around him, what was ultimately his influence not only in the church and the spreading of the gospel to Western Europe, but what was his influence down the line even to us today? It's hard to imagine, yet there is no doubt that, that St. Aristobulus, in his efforts as a Christian, as a lover of Christ and a lover of his gospel, did far, far more to enable us who speak that language today to proclaim our Lord Jesus Christ than we will probably ever, ever know. And it's for this reason that we should honor his memory with great fervor and with great faith and thanksgiving to our Lord who gives us so very much. Bye-bye.